Thanks, Shane. Thank you. I have lots to get through, so I'm going to talk fast. So we're on a mission uh, to be a big part of the North American lithium uh, supply chain. Um, and to do that, um, we've got uh, a handful of assets now. And uh, obviously, my background in development is going to come to the front. Um, it's been about myself in, uh, in development for over 20 years, uh, five of which I spent down at Fortescue building some of their assets um, before moving to Pilbara as the, uh, Pilbara Minerals as the project director on the flagship asset. At Loyal, we're pretty passionate about lithium and uh, we believe we're still early and uh, it's just the beginning. And um, from the technical uh, nature of uh, my experience at Pilbara, it's not just about the, uh, the resource potential, um, the whole value chain has to be considered and that's why we built a, a business um, strategy uh, where we're targeting North American lithium. And we've got four projects currently in our portfolio uh, with Hidden Lake Project up in the Northwest Territories, and then two over in uh, Quebec, James Bay, um, the Brisk, and also the Trieste Project, and also Scotty Lithium down in Nevada. But today I want to focus on our new acquisition, which is a Hidden Lake Project up in the Northwest Territories, and we love it. And the reason why we love it is because it's underexplored but still well understood. And we're doing this project in combination with our joint venture partners in Patriot Battery Metals, who are a minor uh, shareholder in, in five of the claims. So it's a little bit deeper on why we love it. We think it's got great resource potential. There is um, 14 known spodumene bearing pegmatite outcrops um, on the property, uh, 10 of which have been drill tested. Um, but there are still 10 that are underexplored. And in fact, there's been so little um, uh, field mapping done on this project. In fact, it's been dormant for about five years. You can almost see where they've walked down south on the property to find extra pegmatites. But just on the resource uh, potential, up on the four main dikes, they have a cumulative strike length of 2.25 kilometres. And there's been 10 drill holes popped underneath these to confirm that they extend at depth. Um, and they've only gone down to about 30, 50 metres. But um, there's good grades and they remain open at depth and along strike. But as you know, it has to be mineable, but we think they are. With the 2.25 k's of outcropping pegmatites, um, the fresh uh, exposed resistive outcropping, so we think there's significant tons just at the surface um, with widths up to 11.5 um, metres. There's also evidence, um, if the geology or the geometry of the geology uh, proves up, that we I'm can go I'm not sure I understand. Um, on the mineralogy uh, point of view, or the processing uh, point of view, they've already done extensive test work, um, and it's well understood. And the ore itself is quite simple, it's predominantly spodumene with quartz and feldspars. The iron content is particularly low, globally and also for the region. Um, and the mineralogy supports um, all the conventional um, uh, concentration techniques, such as your DMS in the photos, and also flotation. And this was produced from a pilot plant about five years ago. So um, we also think there's something, uh, a real possibility here because the, the geological and metallurgical relationship is um, really telling us there's a simple modular flow sheet possible with a multi-stage DMS, with the first stage being what we call mass rejection. And 50% of the mass can be rejected before it even uh, goes in with very little um, lithium lo uh, loss. And that's due to its uh, high liberation factor. And it's right on a highway, an, an all-weather highway um, 45 kilometres from the capital city of, of uh, Northwest Territories in Yellowknife. It's the Karatha of the North. There's 20,000 people. It's got all your, your mining services there. Um, it was built around mining. We've got a domestic uh, airport that goes throughout Canada, all where the roads down into Alberta. And then on the other side of the Great Slave Lake, there's a, a newly uh, uh, finished uh, rail terminal and there's significant backhaul both on road and rail to get spodumene either down into Canada or over into Northwest Territories. It's how excited a guy gets when he sees Um uh, So we think we've got the ingredients and we're gonna wrap a team around it or us and a part of the Patriot Battery Metals. Um, and we're going to start um, uh, engaging with the, the government and the community. Um, and we hope the market joins in the party. Um, we have a three uh, stage uh, work plan that will be kicking off first, the, the land and community where we'll be engaging with the First Nations uh, the LNI community, the government, we're doing environmental baseline studies, um, the regulators, approvals, um, and the business community. And as soon as the snow melts in this summer, we'll be getting in there and doing um, field mapping, and then ultimately drilling once we have our permits, um, hopefully in the winter. 
Um, but we'll also be getting straight into studies. The Environmental Review Board of, of the North Perth Territories have come up with a concept to fast track these um, large projects. Um, and they want to start seeing um, con concepts of what mines could look like in order to fast track those consultations and process. But after that, we'll be going straight into scoping studies, feasibility, and looking downstream. So for an investor, check out Lift Power. They vented in 14 pegatites um, around the Yellow Knife region. Um, they have a couple of them um, to the north of us. It was a 155 million Canadian script deal. Um, our vendors, about 6 million bucks. Um, they're gonna be escrowed up to 24 months. And um, we have plenty of cash on hand, um, 6.5 as of uh, December, that should be. Um, and uh, so we're, we're fine to take out all the exploration and the study streams until um, calendar year 25. Um, the ASX have asked us to pull together a prospectus and a re for recompliance purposes, um, and with that, they're uh, making us do a, a raise for spread purposes only. After the vending in of this um, package, we'll still have an EV sub 20 million. A little bit of love for our other projects, which are just as exciting. Um, over in James Bay, the Trias project is just 10 k's away from Winston's uh, Adena find. That's had some great drilling over the winter. Um, and we've done some uh, great uh, multispectral analysis that's taken the signature of their finds and found some high targets on ours. Um, but we've combined that with a whole bunch of stuff, including um, the historical uh, data that we obtained from a Cisco in the acquisition. Um, and the regional assessment and we'll be hitting the ground in June for a 12 week program where we collect up to 1700 um, uh, samples um, in priority order. And lastly, um, announcements just been uh, released today. Um, over in Nevada we have a sedimentary um, project. Um, obviously there's lots of support and activity for domestic supply um, in uh, Nevada, but we have uh, hit a large intercept of clay um, uh, from surface to 117 <coughs> metres. And this is just confirming what we thought was there via our MT interpretation, which is a large 3.6 square kilometre basin of sedimentaries, um, starting from about 170 now we've confirmed and hopefully going deeper in the end. But that, that inferred basin is actually below some very high soils that are up to 440 parts, um, 48 parts per million. And it also has a very high boron anomalous um, of 336 parts per million, um, and this is only one kilometre away from our neighbour who have had some phenomenal test results uh, and drill results in 2022 um, that have boron and lithium. And if people are interested in understanding the different types and where it is, I've produced this to really support the, um, the opportunity at, um, uh, at Scotty's. It's quite a different uh, mineralogy down there. It's more of an evaporitic. But that's probably me. Any questions? Uh, just on the chart that you shared with the, um, with, uh, the other the, like spears, they have the mining operation up there as well. Oh, yep, so, yep. Uh, and one thing I noticed is that um, of the other mining operations that were highlighted on that map, yep. uh, they were all kind of there. There were three dying ones, one that was rare or something like that. Yeah. Um, is there any potential for discovering other minerals that I know it's a lithium product. So I think on this one we know so much about it already that we are going to be intercepting lithium. Um, uh, they weren't up there chasing anything else. There is lots of complexities, other areas around. Um, that we've got uh, vitals, which is a, a rare earth. Um, and there's actually some lithium held by um, lift power just now vitals that is quite complex. Um, and so it's got lots of tan. But there is tant in. Um, that is those drill results, about just under 100 parts per million, so it's definitely a viable tan source as well. Um, we're focused on the lithium um, primarily. But yeah, there's diamonds in the region, there's history of gold, there's nickel, there's gas. Like it's, there's lots of activity up there, um, you know. Thank you. Thank you, Evan. Uh, great uh, presentation. Just in, in relation to uh, human life, I'm just wondering if you've got any geophysical um, uh, imaging in that area, which it's wonderful to have outcrops, uh, but uh, it's nice to know if they're continuous uh, at any depth and they're not offset, though, so you don't waste any drill holes. Absolutely. Um, we wouldn't be popping a hole in unless we knew where we are going. Um, I think there's plenty of drill targets for us. 
Um, there has been some geophysics that with the existing data. Um, however, we will be doing more, um, especially the multispectral stuff from satellites. Mm -hmm. um, worked to treat and is working to treat in other places around Canada. So we will be deploying that. Um, and, but absolutely, it's definitely a step for us. Thank you.